everybody! This time we're tackling Raphael's and Ignaz's paralogue. This one has quite a few great rewards, most notably the two battalions, the Victor Private Military and the Leicester Mercenaries. Victor Private Military is a very strong C-rank battalion, up to 6 additional physical attack, 15 hit, 2 protection, and 4 resilience. But it's a fantastic resource for grounded physical units who are a little behind the curve in terms of authority rank. The Leicester Mercenaries are one of the best battalions in three houses, straight up. 7 physical attack, 20 hit, 15 crit, and 4 protection is an incredible spread. It's relatively rare for a battalion to offer so much hit and crit at the same time, and that's a very useful combination for builds that are aiming for high crit rates, especially ones that use vantage and absolutely have to hit. There are a few similar battalions that have their own advantages over the Leicester Mercs. For example, the Goneril Valkyries have slightly better stats all around, and the Keyhole Wyvern Company flies, and they both have the 2 use Assault Troop Gambit. The Leicester Mercenaries offer Blaze instead. That has a lot more coverage in most cases, but only has a single use. As far as the team goes, this is the debut of Byleth and Claude in their advanced classes. For the very first time, I am actually trying to make Byleth a good mage. He's got Thursis and Fiendish Blow and the Gloucester Knights all boosting his magic. One thing that distinguishes Byleth from the other mages is that he has very good speed. So even though his raw magic stat isn't as amazing as Lysithia's or even Marianne's, he performs really well in combat anyway. Claude is training in Warrior to get Wrath. He doesn't need Axe skill points ever again, so he's switching back to bows full time. Eventually, after he masters Warrior, I'll make him a Sniper. We're also seeing Marianne in Dancer for the first time. As I said before, her evasion rate with Swords will let me use her a little bit more aggressively than I would most Refreshers in Fire Emblem games. The objective of this map is to simply kill the commander, but the side goal is to protect the merchants huddled in the south across from the raised drawbridge. You can easily save them by sending a flyer straight to the boss, but if you're not doing that, you'll want to head down and lower the bridge for them quickly so they can escape. Our team is split right from the start, and the eastern group needs more help to reach the action on turn 1 than the western group does. Lawrence uses stride on everyone over there. Marianne dances for him. She has so much avoid in the forest that the nearby enemies will tend to ignore her. I got this. Raphael eliminates this mage immediately. That's the only magical unit on this east side. Ready and willing. I will cover you. Claude uses Blaze to lock down the brigand and mercenary at the southeastern bridge. By doing this, he protects Flame and limits the damage that Lawrence can take. Cyril flies southwest to kill the archer closest to Claude. He's still in range of one other archer, so he dismounts. Currently, the Cavalier can reach Flame, but when Lawrence kills this mercenary, he can use Kanto to move one square to the north, cutting off the enemy Cavalier's path. The western team doesn't have stride, but flight, Cavalier movement, reposition, and Thursis all compensate for that. I have to be careful not to leave Leone in range of enemies across the bridge to the east. It's not that she can't take them, the problem is that she would activate enemies who would walk straight toward the merchants and start killing them next turn. Ready anytime. Ignatz is able to lead this kill for Petra. Of the two of them, it's more important for Petra to reach level 20 quickly. Her promotion to Wyvern Lord gives her a nice movement boost and she's more prepared to pass the exam. Ignat still needs a lot more axe training to get into Warrior. I want to get to the drawbridge right now. Ignatz can already reach it, but I'd prefer for someone with Kanto and high movement to do the job so that they can get back to the fighting quickly. Leonie is the best choice, but there's a brigand in her way. Got 
Ignatz can help get rid of him. Once again, he lets Petra have the kill. Not only can Leone lower the bridge, she can also get out of the merchants' way and wait next to the brawler that Hilda just pulled out of the forest. With 1-4 range Nosferatu, Byleth can easily tank all six enemies up here. Steady now. The main problem for the Eastern team right now is the giant wolf, which is about to use its staggering blow. Lawrence eliminates a mercenary next to it with Frozen Lance. Now there's an opening where Flame can use group flames to break all three remaining barriers. Lawrence still needs healing, so Marianne refreshes Flame to get that done. Appreciated. Cyril kills the second archer. The fighter and the cavalier are still active, but they can't kill anyone. I've organized my units so that they can't gang up on flame, for example. Because Byleth was able to pull all six enemies in that group at once, most importantly the mage to the south, the merchants are able to start crossing the bridge unmolested. Now they've moved far enough to be out of danger for the rest of this battle. I'll bring the whole western team up to destroy the enemies around Byleth and start breaking down the pack at the center of the map. Petra gets another kill boosted by Professor's Guidance, and then she can move in range of the Central Wolf. Violet doesn't need kills right now, he can continue setting them up for others. Leone's Gambit kills the Brawler and also freezes the Mage and Archer. She's already level 19. If I give her a few more big kills, she could reach level 20 here. If she does that, she'll get an early opportunity to try for a Sniper promotion, and I won't have to deploy her in the upcoming mission. I can save that experience for other people who might also hit level 20 then. I stand ready. Thanks to the Knowledge Gem, Lawrence hits C plus in writing, giving him the minimum for a Paladin promotion. I still want to keep working on those ranks in order to make that promotion a surer thing. I want him to certify in both Dark Bishop and Paladin before I do any battles next month, but those are starting on the second weekend, so he only gets two sessions to pass two exams. Yeah! 
Fading Blow uses up a little more weapon durability to get Raphael into a more favorable position. He'll need to go west soon. Because Lawrence has the Knowledge Gem, it makes sense for Marianne to be refreshing him more than anyone else. He gets the most out of each action. Marianne herself is in range of a mage, but the Leaven Sword lets her fight back. We're in good shape now. We've successfully split up the huge mass of enemies in the center, making them a lot more manageable. I'm here to help. You might notice that Hilda is a little underleveled. I am trying to train 13 units more or less equally, and lower leveled units do get more experience points, so in absolute terms, I'll gain more by feeding kills to Hilda and not Leone. But I'm not doing that. Instead, I'm taking an approach that, in game theory, would be called a greedy strategy. I'm consistently feeding the units who are already closest to the next promotion tier. I did that for Byleth and Claude because of their innate 20% higher experience growth, and I did it for Cyril as well because he started out over leveled compared to most of my team. Now it's Leone. Although I'm technically getting fewer experience points, a small core of very strong units makes it easier to train my weaker units in turn. That's true in basically every Fire Emblem game. There is merit in building a diverse team where every unit is pretty strong, but often the best way to achieve that is to focus first on training one or two or three units who break the game's power curve and can then help everyone else. Now, in this case, the next mission is actually pretty easy, so I'm not going to deploy a level 20 Leone there, but she'll be a big help for the first wave of battles next chapter. This is bad. Byleth breaks the last barrier. He also happens to block that brigand's pathway to the west side of the map. And I checked damage beforehand to make sure Leone could finish off the first health bar without using a combat arm. Leone gets Desperation from Mastering Cavalier. It's really hard to make Desperation useful. It's an ability that preempts enemy attacks, but it only works on player phase, where you have tons of other tools to achieve the same thing. You can attack from outside enemy range, or use a gambit, or use combat arts that give you enough damage to kill in one hit. The second use of Stride is a big reason why I like putting the Stride Battalions on horse units, and not on something like a Physic Healer. With Kanto, you can use Stride and still end up reasonably close to the team after turn 1, so that you can catch up and use it again in the next few turns. Raphael kills another mage. Thanks to the wall below him, he's only in range of one enemy, which is good because two mages together would kill him easily. But I'd rather get him out of range entirely to preserve his HP and to make the mages attack people who can actually fight back. With Cyril's shove, I can do that.
Claude uses Shove too, pushing Lawrence into the woods. This saves him a lot of movement points, but it doesn't actually matter. Lawrence retreats back into the forest. He could have used all seven of his movement points to pull off this little maneuver without Claude's help. I'm happy that Petra dodged this 50% accuracy gambit, but I'll proceed as though she did get hit for consistency's sake. I've sucked these mages far into the woods. It's decent defensive terrain for them, but now I'm able to go west and pass them, forcing them to pursue me. They've also abandoned the central area, so it'll be easier to move my whole team toward the boss. As has often been the case, I don't actually want Flane's crit if I can avoid it. It's not a real problem, and if I weren't confident in what I'm doing for the rest of the map, I certainly wouldn't burn a Divine Pulse for this. I, will need all my strength. I habitually leave Flane's Wind Spell equipped for its accuracy and low weight, but Fire has the advantage of 10 less crit. Appreciated. Ready any time. I will get the victory. Who, me? Leone is very close to level 20 now. And Petra is similarly close to 19. I could probably push Leone, Petra, and Lawrence all to level 20 on this map if I tried for it, but I don't have much incentive to do so. They only have the one chance to pass their exams before the next mission, and they probably won't all succeed. And I have 13 slots to fill for the next battle. I can afford to give Petra and Lawrence some of the experience there to get them over the top, and they can stand to improve their skill ranks while they're at it. The boost in charm from the Golden Deer bracelet makes the enemy mercenary less inclined to use his gambit on Petra, while equipping the shield increases Violet's protection so that he still prefers to attack Petra. I want Ignatz to do something here, but I'd rather not face a gambit at all. That gets kind of tricky. If he deals too much damage, the mercenary may choose to use his gambit instead of attacking normally, even if his gambit's hit rate is very low. And that's what we see now. Both Petra and Violet will kill with their counterattacks, and the Merc doesn't want to die, so he's going to use Mad Melee at 30% listed hit. Even a mini bow curved shot yields the same result. Ready anytime. Curve shot with the Forge training bow leaves him with 23 HP, and that's just barely enough to render Petra's counterattack non lethal.
Ready and willing. Claude weakens the brigand because I'll have to clear him out of the way shortly. Ready when you are. After that, Cyril uses Impregnable Wall. He can then fly west to block the Dark Mage's way down the stairs. I made sure to equip his hand axe so he could counterattack that Dark Mage. I stand ready. Lawrence attacks the brigand to get some extra practice. Raphael wasn't affected by Impregnable Wall, so he can grab the kill afterwards. Let us be cautious. I got this. I will need all my strength. I did make a minor error. I should have had Flane heal Lawrence before he moved. I want Flane and Claude both to stay where they are so they can contain the enemy mages. That helps. I stand ready. I got this. Marianne dances for Lawrence again. Now he can reach the boss. Thanks to a pregnable wall, he can get into at least two more battles this turn, but still be completely safe. And since he does so little damage compared to Cyril or Marianne, the Dark Mage will continue attacking him on enemy phase. What do you think you're So Byleth killed that guy. Again, not a real problem, but I'm pretty sure I could do slightly better. Stay focused. Equipping Nosferatu this time, Byleth no longer doubles the brigand, or more accurately, he doesn't have enough uses left to double. Such ready anytime. Ready and willing. Got him. Ready when you are. I got this. I will need all my strength. I stand ready. What do you short shot So I thought I was being very clever, but it turns out changing to white magic made the mercenary attack violent. I had carefully avoided the risk of any gambit, then I changed my plan so I could try to squeeze some more fights in, and ultimately that left me facing the same risk I wanted to avoid in the first place. But it worked out. I did actually dodge the mad melee, so I'm fine with this. One of the bizarre mechanics in Three Houses is that mages have unimpeded movement through thickets, but not through forests. Yo! 
Ignatz's Thief class lets him run through the forest and attack the mercenary from beyond the enemy's pursuit range. Since the Merc has used up both charges of Mad Melee, he's going to attack Petra normally and she'll kill him. I've left Raphael in range of the Dark Mage, and I have to do something about that. Sorry. I'm big. Lawrence retreats down the stairs. By doing so, he forms a three-person line with Leone and Hilda. Can you guess where this is going? Cyril once again blocks the Dark Mage for Raphael's benefit, and Lawrence returns to his previous position. I could have easily finished the map now, of course. I'm just lingering for a little while because the extra training will make my promotion plans much more dependable. Who, me? I'm thinking about whether I'd like Hilda to see some extra combat with the boss in place of Lawrence. This is bad. What I did not consider was that Hilda does more than zero damage to the boss, unlike Lawrence, so he will use his gambit against her. So that was a mistake. Plain finally gets to use Rescue, but she's only doing it to bring Byleth forward, where his personal ability can give other people extra experience. And this brings me to my classic final turn number crunching, where I'm trying to figure out exactly what to do in order to maximize my battle count. Stand ready. Ready. 
ready anytime. Ready and willing. I'm happy to see that Claude cannot kill even with a single crit. Ready when you are. No such luck for Cyril though. Axfair is too strong. Cyril settles for using Impregnable Wall again, just for the authority points. And Leone takes out the boss, just as I hope that's enough to reach level 20. We won't be seeing Leone next time when we investigate the disappearance of several students from the monastery and sadness ensues. Subscribe to catch the next installment. I'll see you there.